fellow artists, my name is Lauren and I am the artist behind Potato Art Studios. In this video, I'll show you how I transfer my reference picture onto my piece of paper. So if you're interested in learning about the grid method to transfer your drawing, just keep watching. I'll be showing you how I set up the grid on my file on my desktop. And I use the photo editing program called Affinity. If you have Photoshop or something similar, um, it'll be a little bit different, but I'm just going to demonstrate with the program that I use. So you can see that I already have my picture open up in Affinity. And now I'm just going to make a new document. File new. And my paper is an 8 by 10, so make sure that my paper or my canvas in Affinity is also an 8 by 10. And because my photo is actually quite high quality, I'm going to be using 300 dpi. Now that I have those three things checked, I'm going to press OK. Now I have a new canvas that's 8 by 10. I'm going to go back to my original photo. And just copy the dog that I'm planning on drawing. This fellow's name is Toki. I'm just gonna copy and paste him in my new file. He's a little bit small, so I'm gonna resize him. Position him right about here. Okay, so for my grid, I want a one inch grid, so I'm going to go to View, Grid, and Axis Manager. So Affinity has an automatic grid, but we're going to override that. So I'm going to show grid and make sure that the spacing for the grids is one inch and my division it's just one. So I want to make sure that my color of my grid is bright enough that it stands out against my dog that I'm drawing. So I think this green is pretty good. We'll be using this subdivision field later on, but for now we're just going to ignore the division and subdivision line. Okay, so we can close that. And now I have a grid. So. It's a little hard to see the part that's transparent, so I'm going to just flood that with the color you can see there. So now you can see that I have a 8 by 10 grid of 8 squares horizontally and 10 squares vertically. And now I can get started on drawing my grid on my physical piece of paper. And we're going to get my grid set up on my physical piece of paper that I'm going to be working on. So here's my paper and I'm making just small marks on the border of the paper with my Prismacolor Cold Erase Pencil. And all I'm doing is connecting the marks on each side of the paper to each other very lightly with the pencil. And I really like using the coal erase pencil um, because you don't need a lot of pressure to make a mark. Um, I found that with normal graphite pencils, it's really hard or I usually end up pressing a little bit too hard when I'm making a mark and then it actually physically indents the paper and so when I'm coloring that area where I drew my sketch initially I'll find that it's harder to color over that part because the phys paper is physically dented so I have to work a lot harder to color the entire area. So I'll leave a link down to, down in the description box where I, with the Prismacolor Cold Erase Pencils, 
um, for a darker paper like this, and especially black paper, um, the white coal erase pencil works really, really well. It shows up much cleaner and brighter than a normal graphite pencil. So actually, since I found out about these pencils, I've used them in basically all of my base sketches and grids for the past at least six months. And I don't think I'll ever go back to using just graphite. So for lighter colored papers, like a white or a tan color, instead of a graphite pencil, I'll use the Prismacolor Cool Erase Pencil in either a gray or a black. And I've really enjoyed the results from that, those colors as well. So you'll see that as I'm working, um, I try to, because I'm right-handed, I'll start in the upper left corner and then move my way across and down the paper. And I have that piece of paper that kind of looks like wax paper um, placed over where my palm of my hand would rest. Um, and that's so that I protect my sketch and my grid from the friction of my hand. Um, because the marks that I make on the paper are so light, it's very easy for them to get rubbed off. So it's important for me to protect my sketch with some kind of barrier. So now I'm going to rotate the entire drawing 180. So I'm going to flip it upside down and I'm also going to rotate the reference picture on my computer. Um, and the reason why I'm rotating it is because I want to work on the upper half of the dog, which is the ears. And to do so in its current, in its previous position, would be a little bit difficult because I like to have my elbow supported by my desk. So if I'm working on the higher portions of the paper, my arm actually gets tired from supporting the weight of my arm. So I've rotated the picture, my reference picture, and my paper so that I can work more comfortably on the upper half of the drawing, which is now the lower half of the drawing now that it's been rotated. So you'll see that I'll go over the same area uh, a second time, and once I've double-checked and made sure that the sketch is fairly accurate, I'm going to thicken that line with my second go around. And if it's not accurate, I'll just simply erase that area and just draw the line more accurately. And so for features, important features like the eyes, I'll actually refine my grid even smaller. So instead of a one inch grid, I am going to turn it into a quarter inch grid. Um, because I want the details to be very, very accurate. So now I'm back in Affinity and Toki is still upside down because I had my drawing upside down. So now I'm going to go in with the sub and add the subdivisions. I want a quarter inch subdivision on his eyes and nose so I can draw them a little bit more accurately than I have it right now. So I'm going to go in and under view, grid and axis manager, I'm going to create quarter inch subdivisions. So under the divisions tab, I'm going to change that to four. And on the subdivision lines, I want the color to be different than my one inch grid lines because otherwise it'll be very confusing once you see all the subdivision lines plotted out. So I'm going to change this color to something very different. So instead of green, we're going to try kind of a dark orange. And this bar is the opacity bar. So I'm going to slowly increase it enough so that I can see it. Not so that if it's full opacity, it's going to be a lot. So I like to have it slightly lower opacity. And now you see the subdivision lines. So if we zoom in, you can see 
that my main one inch grid lines are green and my subdivision lines are red. And so I can get back onto my paper and start refining the details on Toki's face. And I'm creating quarter inch marks um, around where the eye area is. I notice that I'm not doing it for the entire piece of paper. I'm only doing it for the areas where I want to make sure that my details are very accurate. So I'm making quarter inch marks on the areas where the eyes are, but also a little bit more, uh, maybe an extra mark or two surrounding it. So, or if you use too many subdivisions, it's going to get really messy. So I, I would recommend just doing it in the areas that you know that you want the highest accuracy to be. Otherwise, you're going to kind of drive yourself crazy if you use too many subdivisions. So I realized on the left eye that it was completely out of out of line. It was about an eighth of an inch off completely. So I just erased that eye and I just redrew it here. So you see that I've actually keep the pencil on the paper and I'll and that's so that I don't lose track of where I'm working. So I'll hold the pencil onto the surface of the paper and look up at my reference image and find that area that I'm working on and then continue refining the details. And so now that the eyes are done, I'm going to go into the nose. And I find nose is very tricky to do. So because my nose was quite off, I'm going to actually lighten the entire natural sketch with a kneaded eraser, um, which is that gray putty thing that you see me using. Um, and I like to use the kneaded eraser to lighten my, my drawing so it doesn't erase it completely, but it, the surface of the eraser is fairly sticky so it will actually pick up a lot of the white pencil that I have on. And again, you see me hold the pencil to the paper while I double check where I am and make adjustments. So again, I'll have all of the materials that I used linked down below. Um, all of the links will be Amazon affiliate links. So that means a small percentage of your purchase um, will go towards me as a commission if you choose to use them. If you're uncomfortable with the idea of using an affiliate link, you can just copy the item description name and use whatever search engine you want to look it up yourself. If you have any questions about my video, either the drawing process or if there's something that I didn't communicate very well, Ask it down below and I'll get back to you. So now that I got my main features down, I'm just doing a couple more details along the fold of the dog's face. And I'm going to flip my drawing and flip my reference image back to its original position. And I think we're done. In the video for next week, we'll go over how I color this dog. So if you're interested in watching that, um, please subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to be notified when the next video gets uploaded. And thank you very much for watching.